here is the Bible. You might think it's just a really old book with so many words. But in here, there are stories that have been told and retold for thousands of generations. Stories told around campfires, in front of huge crowds. Stories told around a dinner table. Stories that have been made into TV shows or films. Stories that have changed the course of history. Stories you should know. But where should you start? Well, welcome to 10 Must Know Bible Stories. Stories worth exploring. ever felt unsafe or afraid like Dave did when he was stuck up that climbing frame. Sometimes it's hard to admit when we feel like that. We don't want anybody else to know. But just right now at the beginning of our assembly, why don't you pause and think? You don't have to tell anybody else. Just think to yourself, what makes you feel scared? What makes you feel afraid or unsafe? Have a think. Ugh, I hate feeling scared. I was really glad that you were there to help me, Sue, when I was stuck up that climbing frame. That was a horrible experience. You know what? That thing that you thought of that you're maybe scared of? If you want to, you could talk to your friend about it or talk to your teacher about it. It might even make you feel better. Absolutely. And we're all scared of different things, aren't we? There can be lots of things that make us feel afraid. Maybe like Dave, you don't like heights so much, so being up a climbing frame or being up a tree and feeling like you're stuck up there might be something that makes you feel unsafe. Or how about when you go too fast on your bike or your scooter down a hill? That can be really scary. Or, you know, it could be something bigger happening mm. in your life or in the world. I mean, this whole coronavirus thing that's going on, that's really scary. Or, you know, when a storm comes through and there's flooding, that can get me scared too. Absolutely. felt pretty unsafe. Yeah, but someone came to save them. They would have been scared, but they saw someone coming with that tractor and they knew they were going to be safe. I'm so glad somebody came to help them, but what were they thinking? Did they think the car was going to float? Uh, yeah. You don't want to, you need to know what's going to float or sink. Let's play a game. Yeah, let's play Will It Float? Hello and welcome to Will It Float? float? Will it float? I don't know. Do you know? We're going to find out. Here's what we're going to do. I have five items and if you think it's going to float, I want you to give me a thumbs up. If you think it's going to sink, give me a thumbs down for each one. Are you ready? Are you steady? Let's go. Number one. What do you think? A potato. Does a potato sink? Does it float? Does it sink? Does it float? Float now. Okay, we're going to find out. Will it float? No! No floating for the potato! Number two. What do you think too? A cork from a bottle. What do you think? Thumbs up for float, thumbs down for sink. Have you voted? Here we go. Will it float? Ah yes! It floats! One sink, one float. Number three. What do you say to? A clothes peg. A clothes peg. Hmm, interesting. Plastic, quite light. 
float? Sink. Okay here, let's find out. Will it float? Oh, we thought about it, but no! It sunk, it did not float. Have you got all three right yet? I bet nobody has. Let's try number four. What about a zebra? Not a real one, of course. This one, made of wood. What do you think? Wooden zebra? Float? Sink? Let's find out. Will it float? Yes, it does float. Good job, zebra. All right, last one. Fifth and final one. This is tricky. What do you say to an egg? Regular egg, proper regulations here, straight from a chicken. What do you think? Sink or float? Float or sink? Let's find out. It sunk. Did you say sink? Let me let me say. If your egg floats, don't eat it. That means it's gone bad. But eggs should sink. So did you get them all right? Did you get the sinks and the floats? I hope so. See you next time on Will It Float? Bye bye! Did you know there's a really famous Bible story about a, a flood? Hmm, a flood? You mean, oh, the one with the big boat? And the guy named Nolan? No. no. Norbert? No. Nick? No, no. Does anyone know what his name was? Bible, big boat, guy named... Got it. Noah. Noah's Ark. That story's a cracker. Let's hear it. Well, I'm telling you this Bible story in the bath because this Bible story contains water. Quite a lot of water. So I saw, thought the bath um, under the shower would be a good place to tell you it. And this story starts at a really sad time in our world. The Bible says that everybody who was alive at that time was mean and nasty and horrible. And they were being unkind to each other and just doing awful things. God saw what was going on and he was furious. He hated the wrong things people were doing. And the Bible says it made him so sad. So sad, in fact, he said, I wish I'd never made those people. And God decided he was going to start again. But there was one person who was different and God spotted this one person. Here we go. This is Noah. God saw Noah and he saw that Noah wasn't like everybody else. Noah wasn't mean and nasty. Noah was trying to live how God wanted him to. He was kind um, and he was trusting God. He was listening to God and remembering that God was in charge of the world. So God spoke to Noah and he said, Noah, I want you to build a boat. Noah must have been a bit confused. He didn't normally live in the bath or near a river or the sea. But God said, I want you to build a boat. And he told Noah how to build it, what wood to use, how big to make it, how many floors it should have. And he said, Noah, build this boat well, because I'm going to send a flood over the whole world. And I want to keep you and your family safe. So Noah built his boat. This is our boat. Noah built the boat just like God said. And when it was finished, God said to Noah, get in the boat. So Noah got in the boat and God said to Noah, take your family with you. So here, here are some family, some family from Noah. And then God said, I'm going to send you two of every kind of animal. So put them in the, take them into the boat too, so that they'll stay safe as well. So we've got some cows, a few cows. Uh, horses. What else? I don't know. Animals of every sort. We've got ducks here, chickens, um, sheep. All sorts of animals. Two of every kind, just like God had said, came into the boat. And when they were all in safely, God shut the door. And that, uh oh, is when the rain started. It rained, ah, I'm so good, and rained, and rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Now I'm wet here in the bath, but the world was wetter than this. Puddles joined up to become lakes, and lakes joined up to become great big seas, and soon the whole world was flooded. 
but Noah and his family and the animals are safe on the ark because of course it floated. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights until the whole world was covered. I am so wet now by the way. And then the rain stopped. And the whole world was flooded. Everything had died. And the ark floated on the flood waters for another hundred days. But God had not forgotten Noah. God was still with them and still saw what was going on. And he made the ark, that's what we call the big boat, the ark stop against a mountain. And slowly the flood waters went down. And eventually, Noah sent a dove. I don't have a dove, I've got a blue owl. Imagine this is a white dove. Noah sent a dove out of the ark to see what it was like. And when the dove came back with a leaf in his mouth, Noah knew it was safe to get out of the boat, out of the ark. So Noah and all the animals came out of the boat to start afresh in God's world. And as Noah got out of the boat, the first thing he did was to say thank you to God. He built a special altar, a special kind of place to say thank you to God. Thank you to God for being with him um, and for looking after him and keeping him safe. And then God did something too. God said to Noah, I promise never to flood the whole world again. And as he said that, God put a rainbow in the sky and said, when we see that rainbow, we'll remember the promise. I'll never flood the world like that again. And that is the story of Noah and the ark. Maybe you can try telling it next time you're in the bath or shower. Noah and his family must have been so scared in that flood. Yeah, you're right. I mean, that is definitely more scary than me being stuck in a climbing frame. Yes. And they didn't even have a friend like you to come and rescue them. Well, in the story they do have somebody to help them. Oh, of course. The, uh, the, the dove? The dove. No, no, God. Oh, of course. Of course it's God. God is the one that comes to help them. Yeah. So, do you think that means that they weren't really that scared after all? No, there were still people like you and me. They still would have been a little bit scared. That was a really scary situation. But it must have helped them to know that God was with them. Mm. Look, just like I helped you earlier, we've always got our friends to help us. But Christians believe, because we learn it in this story, that God is always there to help us. When we feel unsafe or afraid, we can ask him and talk to him and ask him for help. Absolutely. And that's what we want you to remember from this week. So we have a little challenge for you to be working on to remember this story and what Sue's just been talking about. We want you to go outside and make a rainbow. However you want to do it, that is your challenge for this week. Go outside and make a rainbow. Here's some rainbows that we made in our back garden. One with different colors of leaves and another with pavement chalk. However you make your rainbow, use it as a chance to think about how rainbows are a symbol of hope in cultures and countries all around the world. So hopefully now you've got what your challenge is to go outside and make that rainbow. But as we finish today, there's an even bigger challenge, I think. And that is that if there is something or someone that's making you feel unsafe, that you remember that there are people around to help you and you go and tell the teacher or the person who looks after you at home or a friend. Yeah, and you know what? We both believe that as Christians, you can talk to God about these things too. And the great thing is that you can always trust in God. He will never let you down, no matter what.